All right, so here's the deal. We don't really know what's happening. We've gotten some misinformation, some anecdotes from people about where Joey is. A couple of his brothers, 10,000 brothers are out. It's do or die time, and he's pushing up against that cutoff. Let's go, boy! I'm so happy to fucking be back with yeah. Let's go! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Leadville trip begins. Heading to the airport. Got a flight to Denver today. It is Monday. Six days in Denver before race day. Gnarly week. Mostly like a gnarly 30 hours. Never thought I'd be traveling somewhere to go run 100 miles. We're doing it. We're doing it for the experience. Let's see if I got that dog in me. See if I could actually go run 100 miles at elevation while I've been training in Florida. My entire training block let's get this adventure on the road and we made it we boarded early with the crew empty plane time to go to denver all right minivan secured driving over to eric's i'll meet up with mike we're going to some hike somewhere we're gonna take it nice and easy nice easy miles today it's supposed to be a day off but might as well get moving up at altitude We're gonna do a little climbing, a little bouldering, a little scrambling. We're just being extra safe before we go run 100 miles. Extra safe, just soaking up the Colorado lifestyle. Let's go, that's the plan. We'll do this, probably two hours of hike and climbing, and then we'll uh, hit the sauna, maybe the ice bath. Yes, sir. Have a day. Holy smokes. Here we are. Climbing these rocks. Out in Colorado. We are in El Dorado Canyon, on top of a ridge. I'm not quite sure the name of it, but out there you can see 14,000 foot peaks, Indian peaks. Pretty epic. Super epic. That is what we just climbed, right along that edge, a few days before we go run 100 miles. That's right, <laughs> getting the Mount Joey activated. All right, well that hike was sick. It was like a scramble, more of like climbing, and then hiked our way down. And uh, now heading over to Eric's house, hit the sauna, eat some burgers, and uh, hopefully get to bed early, start stacking up some sleep because we won't be sleeping much on this race. It'll be 30 hours, so we'll start at four in the morning. So that'll be a super early wake up time, like, you know, 1.30, 2, maybe a little bit earlier. And then all through that day and then all through the night finishing 10 a.m following day so the chef i didn't do that he's the chef that I did. He's a chef <laughs> how does it look how does it look judge him so judge him. I'm, I'm actually the sioux performance chef of denver colorado and every time dan is in town i like to cook for him hey, it's so true every single time beautiful we got some tots we got some wedges we got some burgers all right just left the eric hidman spot thank you so much eric and sarah for having me uh, the last three nights. I was staying there for three days. I didn't really film all that much while I was there. And then right now I'm heading up uh, to meet up with another buddy, Don. And uh, it's closer to Leadville, up at altitude. I'm gonna chill with him. He's a legit, legit ultra runner. I mean, he wins 100 mile races and stuff. So he's a savage. Great, great guy for, for me to be linking up with and talking to just prior to the race. All right, we're back at Don's house. This place is sick. We've got a Sisu sauna down there, a plunge, which is awesome. I got my plunge in my balcony, so he's got the XL one on this little platform. Sweet house, awesome little balcony out here, and an epic view of the mountains. And this Don, I don't know, I about forgot. Oh, <laughs> this Don. So yeah, he is professional ultra runner. I guess, right? Yeah, living the dream up here Still in Fair Play, Colorado at 9,600 feet in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, dude, we're, we're South up Park. Here. We're up here, South Park, yeah. Well, thanks for having me, dude. Always. Appreciate it. Hey, Bean. Lori, 
morning. Just left Don's house, heading to Leadville. This is crazy, it's all kind of hitting right now. But today we got a little shakeout run with Koros and Goo. And then 10 a.m. we have the athlete meeting. 12, I have a little interview thing I have to do with Koros. And then just picking up my packets and getting over to the Airbnb, carbon up, and then just chilling, chilling for the rest of the night, trying to get to bed fairly early if possible. I am scared, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's all getting pretty real. It's a lot to take in, but ah, oh, man, oh, I'm getting like emotional. I don't know why, but I put a lot of pressure on myself. It's like there's nothing, <laughs> there's absolutely nothing on the line other than me not wanting to fail. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah, it's a big feat. I mean, I've only ran one marathon. So much gray area going into this race. Clearly, internally, I'm not sure if I could do it, but uh, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna send it. Keep, keep putting one foot in front of the other and uh, try my best. But I have a sick crew. The boys are supportive. They're gonna be out there, root me on, and then hopefully pace me from 62 miles on. And, uh, Gotta keep my fucking head together. Keep moving forward. But super blessed to even be able to be doing this race, to have a spot, to attempt something like this, and to get myself way, way out of my comfort zone and try something this fucking hard. So, let's go. 100 miles tomorrow. Let's get it. All right, all right. Shake out run with Goo and Koros. What's up, Joey? We got the boys. Yeah. What's your name? Mike Harkins. From what, Jersey. Uh, this is your first time running it? First race ever. First race ever? Never done a race. <laughs> Holy smoke. No 5K, no 10K. Absolute <laughs> savage, Straight to 100. Dude. Absolute <laughs> savage. You've been sacking some miles. I've, I've been following you on Instagram. Uh, yeah. I've been seeing you, you putting in the work. Yep. We're just hitting like the first mile and a half down and then mile and a half up, so. Just getting used to the beginning of the course. Getting used to finishing the race. Here. Getting used to finishing the race, that's right. <laughs> Let's go, the squad is here. We're at the BV Airbnb. The war room. Check it out, check it out. You wanna do a little tour? Yes, a little tour. Little, my, my cribs? Yes, let's do it. All right, check it out, check it out. Come on over here. <laughs> the best part of the house. The donuts. The best part of the house, the donuts. Check out these donuts. <laughs> the three <laughs> box of donuts. Then we got the normal text leaves. Of course. Of course. What are you gonna do without those? Code, code Diaz. Code Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> nice, lavish kitchen. We got the squad, Tyler Morris, we got the, the crew chief over here, Brock Covington. The brains of the operation. <laughs> and and the brawn. Just straight, we have straight the muscle. Yeah. We have the joker. Yeah. The joker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's pretty much all we got, by the way. It's pretty sweet. And when you start the race, you're consuming those calories during those first three hours. During those first three hours. Yeah. And then once you get to that aid station, that's when we're going to take your trail. This is hectic, dude. Well, uh, it could have been more of a bear, I'll tell you. Oh, you got that advanced skin five. I feel like this is five. That's what I'm What's that? <laughs> what to expect? Just chaos. Especially when I gotta keep watch over these children <laughs> over here. Hey! <laughs> Team mom. Team mom. I need a more supportive crew. But we're gonna send it. Look at it. We got the fuel. We just gotta make sure we can take it. We gotta make sure we drink water. We gotta make sure we eat food. We gotta take in calories. We gotta keep putting one foot in front of the other.
And that's what we're gonna do. Joey, what's it feel like to almost run 100 miles away? That's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. We're, we're in the pre stage. How far out are we? Two hours? We're less than two hours from beginning to 100 miles. How are we feeling? Freaking out a little bit. But we're gonna have our big home. We're gonna. Diaz, how are we feeling with the minimal plan? With the minimal plan? With the minimal plan. 100%. Come on! Get it, 17! You don't know me, son! Get it! All right, good morning. This is what we're conquering today, right here. So, starting off, start line, finish line is an out and back. So we're ripping out here, about 12.6 miles over to Make Wheel. This is our first gonna see the boys. Then we're gonna rip over to Outward Bound, about another 11.9 miles. This is gonna be the second aid station. Then over to Half Pipe. All the way over to Mount Elbert Mini Aid Station. Twin Lakes is a main one where I'm really gonna try taking some cows prior to Hope's Pass. Hit Hope's Pass over to Winfield, back and back, Twin Lakes. If I can make it back to Twin Lakes, they say you have a really good chance of making it all the way back to that finish line. So that's the game plan. I'm gonna smash some food here and then pick up my pacers, pick up Brock, and we're gonna make our way all the way back to that finish line. This is why you pack the night before. Let's go. From here on out, our only job is to get this stallion across that finish line. That's right. Can you explain the situation right now? Oh, the situation is we have a 100 mile race in about, well, he has a 100 mile race <laughs> in about 30 minutes, and we were running on E, because fortunately we did not get gas last night, so we uh, yeah we got thirty. We got ten miles. We got ten miles left on the tank. We had like thirty miles to get yeah. there. Joey thinks we'll stretch it. Our plan. So we'll see. We got a loose plan in every scenario. This is real, real. The only thing we can do now is execute. Seven hundred people. Probably about three fifty are gonna finish. We're gonna be we're gonna be one of those three fifty. This is the hardest physical test of my life. I'm gonna start the Leadville Trail 100 run. Just take it one eight station, one mile at a time. So, that's all we can do. All right, so we are trying to get to the first aid station at May Queen right now. We're looking for the shuttle, uh, scrambling. The plan is, uh, it's it's scarce, it's scarce, but we're making it work. We got the bottles kind of ready to be refilled. We got his pre-packed bag, gels and all that to restock him at May Queen. So we're gonna try and book it there. And uh, yeah, hopefully Joey's feeling good. We're gonna catch this shuttle to the first aid station to see our boy. He should be in good shape, about 12 miles in. Uh, he won't sit, but we'll fuel him up. Right now we have uh, Brock refilling his uh, flasks so that he's just a quick swap with me. I'm in charge of the flasks and the refills. Diaz is gonna make sure that he has all of the replenishment on the, uh, on the gel side. And Brock is just our fearless leader leading us to the finish line, so that's what we got. 10 miles in, 10%. Boys are moving together, sticking together a little mission out here in the woods. So we got a little update from the crew. They will not be meeting me at May Queen. The shuttle system is just too jam-packed. So we'll see them at uh, Outward Bound. Just use what we have at the aid station. and. Uh, Probably good anyway. We'll save some time. Almost to May Queen. Almost to the first aid station. Right, Beautiful view back there. Back on the road. Home territory. 
Even though I like I like the trails better. Me too, <laughs> I like the trails Me better. Too, it's a little softer. Morning. A little more up and down. Yeah, yeah hiking. Let's go. Feeling good. Feeling strong. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> See you, boys. Woo! The sun is shining. Yeah. We got some good views out here now. Yeah. Look at that. Just walking this uphill, just taking it nice and easy. And we got a nice stint of downhill runs coming up. So looking forward to that, picking up some time, getting over to the next aid station, meet the crew, get some more fuel, get some more water. Keep on trekking, let's go. So we did not make it to Make Wing because the shuttle system was not was not adequate. We couldn't make it in time. So we're here at Outward Bound. We got probably like three hours until Joey rolls in. So we're killing some time. You know, we'll be all good set up. He really just, he'll, he'll be all right. We told him to spread out the Joes a little bit. We'll restock him here. He'll be good. And then um, he has another aid station after this, then Twin Lakes, which is a big one before Hope Pass and all that. So yeah, killing some time, enjoying these beautiful views and uh, we'll see Joey very soon. Joey's gonna be going through so many different thoughts. Like, I know if I were out there, I'd be happy sad, I'd be pissed, tired, wanna quit, don't wanna quit, I'm a badass, I suck. The management, the, the, when it gets into like mile 60, I don't know, can't speak for the guys that have actually done ultras, cause I've never done one, but I can only imagine that the self-talk gets real. Joey, we're coming for you, or are you coming for us? I don't know, it's one of the two. <laughs> Couple miles from Outward Bound. The only thing I'm really worth stressing about right now is I'm all out of water, out of electrolytes. But holy shit! I mean, look at look at that view. That view is insane. But yeah, I'm like 1.8 out. Ty's gonna meet me with some water and electrolytes, and then I have to hit the bathroom. Thank you, thank you. And then eat some food, pound some cows, and then back on our way. Mike and them are just behind me. I'm just trying to get a little ahead of them in the meantime because they don't have to hit the bathroom. So I just want to link back up with them after the aid station as soon as possible because Mike is killing it, pacing us and just keeping us nice and easy on track. So, but man, we're like 21 miles in or something like that. And overall feeling really good. I mean, still super early, so it's got to stay calm hydrate, eat, just continually fuel and we'll get there. Feed you into the tent and we'll go from there. Perfect, sounds good. Let's go baby, we made it. Listen, when I, I knew want, I wanted this. I want you to down both of those bottles before you get to half pipe. Okay. And then refill both with probably, you're just gonna have water. You got electrolytes in there? Yes, electrolytes, go on more is in there. Let's go. Um, we're gonna fill you up with the gels. So you just need to down both of those. You need to spread the gels out between you get to the, uh, to, before you get to Twin Lakes. Is that the chair? Fuck. You got my phone. <laughs> Joey is looking good. Feels good. His head, head space is good. Boy is, boy is crushing it right now. He's happy, fueled, ready to put in more miles and catch him with the next one. All right, a little update here. Just past Outward Bound, met up with the squad, hit the bathroom, got a bunch of calories in, two Uncrustables and a Bobo bar. <coughs> got refueled up on some liquids and uh, we're back out there. We're just gonna walk through this field at a nice pace and then once we're ready, once we've digested a little bit, we're gonna get back and do a little bit of a jog, but we got some uphill coming, so we're just gonna stay on pace with that and just keep keep walking the uphills. Right. Mike did the That's same. Right. He Feeling got fueled good. up. Running smart. Feeling good, running smart, sticking together, and uh, we're gonna keep on moving. All right, so we stopped back at the house. It is about 11.26. We're expecting Joey at Twin Lakes at like one o'clock. Um, so we head back, refueled, 
and uh, got everything settled, got anything we left, got some waters, and uh, we're about to head, like I said, to Twin Lakes. Probably gonna see Joey around 1 p.m., maybe a little bit after, and then he's got a big climb. So um, yeah, we're gonna go there, set up, and uh, we'll find our guy. some misinformation, some anecdotes from people about where Joey is. We think he's made the cutoff, uh, coming back over Hope's Pass towards us at Twin Lakes. Yeah. Um, the, a couple of his brothers, 10,000 brothers are out, as far as we know. And so the idea is we are getting organized for the next 38 miles so that we can streamline this thing and get him to 100 because we gotta go when he comes in. It's. Uh, it's do or die time and he's pushing up against that cutoff so brock's gonna get in and it's gonna be you know 10 seconds on the shot clock and uh we're gonna hit some shots so that's what we're doing we're carrying the boats the logs everything it's getting yeah. carried and uh they do not know him son Let's go, baby. Let's fucking go. Let's go, Joey! Let's fucking go! Let's go, boy! Let's fucking go. Diaz, we need to tape up my toes. I got you. That's what we got. We got some tape. Shins and shins are really tender. 23, we gotta be off the chair at at 9.33. We're gonna fucking make it, bro. Start putting some shit in your body. I yeah, got your feet, don't worry about it. Bro. I'm so happy to fucking be back though. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah buddy. I was, dude, the whole, the whole yeah. march up fucking, who passed, I was just falling. Yeah. And then I was like, I gotta stop fucking crying because now I'm sweating and I'm fucking crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm it's not gonna there. look good in pictures. Bro, <laughs> bro dude, no. now? What's his name when he's fucking taking pictures? I'm like, I got a fucking tear coming down my face. I'm telling everybody, I'm like, I'm fucking crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Oh, Where's the other okay. sock? Here comes the boom! Bro, he comes the boom, bro. <laughs> you look like fuck I was like, he better be ready to walk. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> We're gonna walk the fuck out of this thing. We're gonna, we're gonna as they say, pretty girl walk. walk. And, mine, and mine's there too, but. You ready to rock and roll? Let's rock and roll, baby. Let's go, guys. Let's rock and roll. Yes, sir. Let's yes, sir. Switch back. I'll be profing. Did you down any? I don't know. No. I'll be profing. <laughs> Wear that buckle out on your belt. Let it get there. Let's go! Yeah, we want you. Let's go, boys. Let's go, brother. Hey, can we give a slight jog just till we get to the front? So what we're gonna do is just work on little milestone jogs when we can. I always think of it as a matter of time. If you just keep moving your legs, 
eight hours from now, you're at the finish, man. We'll just go fast walks and then a little slower walk. For anybody thinking about running, the level 100, don't do it. So we are about to roll up on half pipe. We're feeling good. We're doing a lot of 20 second little interval burst. Joey's feeling good. He's rocking it out. We're holding good, fast, steady paces. We're gonna refill up here, get to the next aid station, get this man some ramen, some refills, anything he wants and needs. Cause, cause we love him. Caffeine. Caffeine. Yes, sir. man it's time to eat we've been in the pain cave together a couple times Joey and I you know what this is like my guy's crushing it like I wanted to do we saved another 30 minutes he was crushing on the walks we got up to a good pace 16 17 per mile for walking the inclines obviously were harder but we held really steady on those. And then what was working really well was 20 second intervals. So I would just kind of start with 20, slowly count down. We just pick little milestones as well. And um, he's doing really great. So we kept up a really good pace, made up a lot more time. So I told him here, let's just really take it easy. Take your time, he's taking a dump now. Um, eat some food, warm up more importantly, cause he was getting really cold in the last stretch. He got really cold randomly. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna take our time here cause now he's got like an hour of cushion room rather than 30 minutes. He's gonna get the buck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Woo! This is good fusing it for me. <laughs> yes, sir, you're looking good. Looking real good. So we're about five and a half miles in. Joey's slugging the way. We caught a couple of studs in front of us, told us we're moving really well. Joey, how you feeling, man? Good. I'm moving. Struggling a little bit, but I'm moving. He's moving great. He's feeling good. Yeah, great job. Yes, sir. the second the last leg together before I dropped him off to Diaz to take him home. It was a tough one. It was a long uphill to start along the power line and uh, you know Joey's legs are already jello. He, he crushed the uphill and once we got on the back backside pretty technical but he did really well there too. The idea was to try to give AD as much time as we possibly could so when we arrived it was a little after 540. Um, the guys had everything ready from the warming blanket to the food. We refilled his bottles and I think with the sunlight coming up my man started to feel the vibe he hopped on with AD and they headed out so I think he only needs to cover about 20 minute miles from here on out to make it to the finish so he's good man this is this is gonna be a good day for us That was insane. I mean, that is such an iconic race, such an incredible way for me to run my first ultra marathon, my first 100 mile race. And honestly, I would have never signed up for it by myself. So shout out 
to Coros. They got me into the race and I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. And also huge shout out to my team. I would have never crossed that finish line without the group of people surrounding me during that race. Huge shout out to Brock. He was my crew chief. The only person in my team that has ever ran a ultra marathon. So I look to him for things like pacing strategy, fueling, when to use the hiking poles, what it looks like at the aid station in terms of what, what I need to get refueled with, what am I eating while I'm in the aid station, what am I taking with me. And then my second pacer, Tyler Morris, uh, just a great friend of mine, super good energy, and I felt like he truly believed in me during that race, and that put the belief in me. And then my third and last pacer, Anthony Diaz, he took me to the finish line. He's just good energy, goofball, great friend of mine, and I feel like I needed that energy at the end of the race. Even though we didn't really talk much because I was so out of it, uh, he helped me get, get through the end of that race. And then also behind the camera, Izzy, um, great friend of mine and an absolute beast behind the camera, capturing all these moments. Some of them were shot by Andrew Shelley as well, great friend of mine. And then Kaimi was like the mother of the group. She brought us all together, fueled us with all the peanut butter and jellies and just amazing energy. I think from this race, I found out how far I could push myself. And I still didn't find my limit, but I found out that I could push myself a lot further than I thought I could. Now all there is, is to continue to push and see how far I can go, whether it's another ultra marathon, whether it's you know trying to go sub three or starting a business or anything that's gonna be hard in my life, I know that I can do a lot more than I thought I was capable of. To get out of your comfort zone is so important. We have one life and we want to all live it to the fullest and do as much as we possibly can for ourselves and also to hopefully motivate others and just to do it with amazing people around you, with great friends. Also, sorry for all the F-bombs. I curse a lot more in that video than I would have liked to, but and the emotions were high, and I guess I curse a lot, so I'm gonna clean that up. But thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next one. Let's.